Hello everyone. I thought it was about time to make some tutorials on graphing, specifically linear graphs. I know how hard it can be to understand these things when you're just starting out and you haven't really dealt with graphs before. Today we're going to look at something called the gradient. Here are three linear graphs. You can tell they're linear because they all have the shape of a straight line. The arrows here are the x and y axes of a Cartesian plane. So all three lines have been plotted on the same plane. What's different between the three lines? I'll give you a couple of seconds to think about it. Well, they all have different slopes. The red line is quite a bit steeper than the other two. Gradient is basically a fancy term for slope. What's special about gradient is that you can assign a number to it. If that gradient is a positive number, it means the line you're looking at slopes up to the right, like this. If it's a negative number, the line slopes down, like this. The actual value determines how steep the line is. A gradient of 2 indicates a steeper line than one with a gradient of 1. A gradient of negative 2 is also steeper than a gradient of negative 1, or positive 1 for that matter. We say the absolute value of the gradient is what we call the steepness of the line. Absolute value is sort of its distance from zero. Now then, how do we calculate the gradient of a straight line? This is no trivial matter. As you learn more about linear graphs, you will see that gradient is actually one of their most important aspects. There's a rule we can use to work out the gradient. It's like this, rise over run. That means rise divided by run. Ah, oh, more new terms. What are these rise and run things? Rise refers to the vertical distance between two points on a graph. Run is the horizontal distance between those same two points. That means the gradient is given by this distance divided by this distance. When you're doing problems like this, choose points on the graph whose coordinates are easy to see. For this example, I just made some up. That vertical distance, we'll say, is 9 units, the rise. The horizontal distance, the run, is 3 units. That's cool, we can calculate the gradient of the line now. Remember, gradient is equal to rise divided by run. In other words, 9 divided by 3. 9 divided by 3 comes to exactly 3. So that's the gradient of this line. Awesome! Let's look at another example with some context other than just a line on a grid. Think about a car driving down a road. The person driving this car is a keen mathematician, and she's measuring the horizontal and vertical distances her car travels over time. Suppose the car moves 10 meters horizontally and 2 meters vertically in a second. That's perfectly reasonable on a downtown road. Ask yourself, what is the rise? What is the run? What would the gradient or slope of the road be? I'll give you a few seconds to think about it. First of all, the rise is the vertical distance the car moves through. It travelled 2 metres down from where it started. That's a fall rather than a rise. Hmm. We need some way to show the rise is actually a fall. This is one case where we need to insert a negative sign. That makes sense because the surface of the road looks like a line with a negative gradient. Did you notice that? Great job if you did. So the rise is negative 2. How about the run? That's not so difficult. It's the 10 meters the car traveled horizontally. Let's just write 10. Units don't matter here because they cancel out when you calculate the gradient. Finally, let's do the calculation. Gradient is equal to rise divided by run. In this case, that's negative 2 divided by 10. And it comes out as negative 0.2. You can check that on a calculator if you don't believe me. Good show. Hopefully you feel ready to continue, and I've convinced you that gradients aren't as scary as they can seem at first. You just need to get to know them. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, feel free to like, subscribe, or leave a comment.